Fairfax is one of the counties in our 12 county district, so we're doing a standard community workup today on Lake Fairfax and Reston. And we haven't been here in a long time. Last time we were here was probably eight years ago. And back then the bass fishery looked really, really good for a small lake in a fairly urban watershed uh, in terms of a good bass population and you know, a decent fish community overall. Well, we wanted to take a fresh look and, and see what some, uh, you know, what, a, what the management has been like over the last few years and determine if any changes need to be made. And, and so we did one shoreline circuit with the electric fishing boat. Um, we missed our window. Our, we really would have want, wanted to do this about a month ago when the fish were shallower because of cooler water and spawning activity. Uh, so we, because of the storms, we, a lot of our dates had to be rescheduled and this is one of the things that got pushed several times, but we finally made it here today and it's raining again. But we were able to get a successful survey done. And the fish community looks good, again. Um, maybe not quite as good as it did last time, but I think we have a little time of year and water temperature bias. And still looks good considering that, which is really good. We did about a third of an hour of electrofishing, uh, which is, and we got uh, 50 bass, which is a pretty good, pretty high catch rate for bass. Our catch rates were inhibited slightly, or not slightly, more than slightly, by uh, lots of aquatic vegetation. So we, we have um, some sort of submersed aquatic plant. I believe it's coontail. I'm going to take a look at that and make sure later, though. But in terms of treatment and ecological function, it's pretty much the same as if it was hydrilla or coontail or milfoil or whatever. It's a very dense aquatic grass, and it tends to um, shade out most of the water column less than probably four feet or five or even six feet if the water gets clear later in the summer when it quits raining so much. And what that does is it gives the, the prey fish ample too much ample opportunity to hide and it gives the predators, um, like sight feeders like bass, makes it very, very hard for them to forage effectively. What we saw today was in the bass sample that we got, a lot of larger but very skinny fish indicating that they're having a problem foraging. And there's black crappie in here as well. The size structure of the black crappie is pretty decent. Um, so, but that is also a species that will compete with bass and will further inhibit maybe their ability to feed effectively. So what we would look at based on our size distribution of bass is thumbs up, uh, looks real good. They're stockpiling a little bit, like maybe around 14 inches, but that's not a real bad place to stockpile. Uh, it means the kids can still catch good fish and, and those fish hopefully will grow out of the stockpile pretty quick if we knock back that aquatic vegetation a little bit. Um, the bluegill were plenty of small ones, not so many big ones, which that's not a bad thing either. We had the red ear sunfish. There's a different type of sunfish. They tend to be larger, and we did see larger red ear sunfish. Um, uh, brown bullhead is a uh, native catfish. We saw a few of those, and they're huge, uh, which is a, a sign of, of good high fertility water and the fact that they're being able to function better in uh, dense aquatic vegetation with a lot of invertebrates around, being that they're kind of omnivorous. It gives them an upper hand. A couple big American eels, which is nice. That's a catatomous fish, an native fish that uh, migrates from the salt water to spend its lifetime in, in fresh water. And they were able to negotiate the uh, Lake Fairfax Dam, probably in all this high water we've had, and actually slithered across the land uh, better than any other fish that we know of, including the snakeheads, and uh, found their way into Lake Fairfax, which is pretty cool. So a couple eels. People have illegally stocked snakeheads in almost every water that we manage, in a lot of waters that we manage. And we're monitoring that to determine if there are ecological impacts. So far, based on what we've seen in the lakes, so short term and long term, based on the Potomac River, where we've been studying snakeheads for 15 years, we honestly haven't seen any real ecological impacts. And, and so far, you know, based on the, all the dire prognostications, it doesn't look like any of that's come to fruition. So we're still concerned about people moving them around, and it is illegal. But um, from you know the, we haven't seen a real downside at this point point. and again we just scratched the surface here today that the 50 bass the two eels uh, 30 40 bluegill we saw and the 20 red ear and the other things are just just a, a very small snapshot uh, hopefully somewhat representative of what was here uh, and again with the noted time of year bias I think we're pretty much hitting it on the mark so um, in terms of future management I'd say just encourage anglers to harvest crappie any crappie they catch up to the statewide 25 per day have them harvest crappie any size. Um, bass, I'd say, just keep doing what you're doing. The bluegill and red ear, keep doing what you're doing. And then we'll probably try to do something to manipulate and downsize the uh, amount of biomass of aquatic vegetation. And that'll ease up uh, functioning across the board. We still want to keep some of it, but we just don't want as much as there now. Because if we see if as much aquatic vegetation now, I can't imagine what it's going to look like in two more months. Um, it's going to be really, really thick. You can probably just about walk across the lake on it. And that makes it really hard to fish. And that makes it hard for a fish to forage on, on their own. So. That's pretty much, I think, the only management option really needed.